What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745. And in this video, we're going to do something different. This is going to be a PvP discussion, and what you're seeing right now is actually from the end of the last tournament. Now, I don't want to do full discussion videos all the time, but when there's a big topic, especially one as huge as PvP, then I think it is appropriate to go ahead and make a full video just discussing some of the strategies, explaining certain things, and trying to help you by sharing my knowledge and opinions on the current state of PvP. Now, quick actions have been changed and characters have been nerfed, but the essential part of this discussion still remains intact, even with this old footage. So be honest, this old footage from the end of the last tournament really does a great job in illustrating what you need to know about PvP. Now, during the end of the last tournament, I was away roughly until about one day remaining and I fell all the way down to 1593 rating. Well, I should clarify, I was away fishing and had no internet access for a few days prior to this. So I dropped down to 1593, and then my climb started around 1611. What dropped me all that way? Well, of course, defensive losses. And I'm telling you right now, no matter what team you have, if you have every character and every costume in the game, if you have all 2G armory items, you will still lose a lot on defense. Some days you'll lose 100 or 200 rating. It's going to happen. That may come as a surprise to some of you, but there is good news. Now this was one very epic climb. And yes, maybe you won't go 100% on your offensive wins, but if you are capable of winning most of your attacks, then you can finish in one of the top leagues. Offense is weighted in this game. Just the fact that you can accumulate so many different challenge points well, that's going to allow you to gain a lot of rating, as long as you can win your attacks. Winning on offense is a lot easier than winning on defense, mainly because you're a human against an AI. So learn their patterns. Find out the optimal skills to use in every situation. This becomes clear to you the more often you fight. So even if you want to do practice battles, it can go a long way. Before too long, you'll know exactly what the AI is most likely going to do in just about every situation. Honestly, they're not going to throw you too many curveballs. They're programmed to do a certain thing in a certain situation. That's why you always have the advantage. You're unpredictable and you can adapt. So yes, one of the things I'm always getting asked about PvP is what defensive team should I use? And sure, you want to put in your strongest defense possible that could help you steal a few wins, but you can never rely on them. One day you'll be positive and the next day you'll be twice as negative. It's just the way the system is, so you have to game the system. I do that by maximizing my offensive wins. You definitely want to be efficient there. Then I get myself to a safe rating zone and just coast. I go to my absolute highest rating, let's say a day before the tournament ends. I do not under any circumstance wait until the final day. That day is plagued with disconnects, CVEs, refreshes. You do not want to be between leagues on that day. You want to be at least a couple hundred rating points above it. If you're aiming for adamantium, then you want to be at least at 1750. But lately, I try to go above 1900 and then break 2000 just before the end. If you do that, you don't even have to play on the final day. Now, just to be thorough, I am going to cover defenses at least a little bit because it is somewhat important even though not nearly as important as you're attacking. For defenses, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I see it as stealing a win. You are stealing a win away from that attacker. That's why in the past, many teams that could catch you off guard, or could get lucky procs and end a character or team before they got a chance, were some of the most popular and successful teams on defense. So way back in the day it was Ares and Rogue, and it was because of their procs, that allowed them to attack you all the time, stun you, and join in on each other's attacks. There were plenty of examples before them, don't get me wrong. Coordinated attack was big for a while. When Captain Britain hit the scene, he stunned everyone and destroyed entire teams. And so on and so on. But along those lines of the follow-up attack, there of course were the Psylocke and Quicksilver teams. The whole focus of those teams was to get your teammates to join in on your attacks, and to drop an enemy before they could even do anything about it. It was just like, surprise, you're dead. And those type of teams are still popular even to this day. 
In a somewhat related fashion, we now have Star-Lord and Quicksilver. Then in the same vein of Captain Britain and his debut season, we from time to time have very powerful releases, whether that be a new hero or a new costume. Kurth right here is a perfect example of that. The costume became unlockable, and then she started to dominate. These type of characters and costumes continue to do so, until they're either nerfed, or something comes out that counters them. So when building a defensive team, it's often a very big bonus to jump on a new hero or alternate costume before they're actually balanced. This trend goes way back. So far, a great defense can consist of new overpowered characters and costumes that can also extend to a new weapon or item like when the weather control device came out. Before that, we had another philosophy which was the follow-up attacks Try to surprise your opponents with a coordinated effort or just getting extra turns. Then the last defense that I will talk about is the defensive build. This is where you're basically going to go full tacticians and bruisers for your hero armory, all defensive items, and then you're going to either try to tire out your opponents, possibly making them abort the fight, or your team may just overcome them after a very long time. An example of this would be Rescue an Angel or Rescue an Invisible Woman. But then, in my opinion, there are even better combinations of this. The Full Defense Debuff Team. Of course, the classic example is Red Hulk and Pestilence Beast. This team has offensive power, especially with the debuffs, Red Hulk's bulwark, and Beast doing quite a bit of damage. But you also want to give them very high health. You make your defensive team very hard to damage while taking down your opponents over time. I would even include Groot and Gamora in this final category. Especially because of the survival training. And the fact that Groot's more of a stonewall and Gamora's going to do a lot of her damage with Doom. Oh, and also Invisible Woman and Molly Hayes. Molly Hayes of course is aggro. But your team is defensive in that you're just trying to keep her alive and keep debuffs off of her, especially exhausted until she attacks. So when you're using teams from this final category, what you want to do is set up your armory for defense. So switch your heroes to bruisers and tacticians, gaining health and defense. Then your armory items should be at least balanced, but I would go with full defensive. That's a really big key. Make sure your armory is actually built for your defensive team. This includes your hero armory. I do that because the AI needs the most help. Then on the flip side, if you're using one of those attack teams with Quicksilver, Star-Lord, Psylocke, Deadpool, any combinations like that, then you want to go heavy attack. Make sure that a character like Quicksilver really stings that offensive team. You're trying to hit them hard and quick. That's how you steal a win. Like I said, defense is a 50-50 proposition at best. Just be happy with whatever wins you can get. In this game, the dirty little secret is, a strong offense is the best defense. And if you're looking for any offensive team suggestions, check out my videos. You will find a ton of combinations there. As for this discussion, that's going to be it for now. But I'm thinking of bringing back the adamantium process, but with some slight modifications. Instead of just previewing teams, we'll do discussion videos like this, strategy, Tips like who should you recruit and who's the most powerful characters in the game. Basically extending the series to cover all the tips and tricks to help you get to the Adamantium League. Which really was the essence of the series to begin with. So let me know what you think about that and please stay tuned for many more videos coming this week. Lastly, thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck and take care.